So we've already started the design, right? So we've already started a little bit of design. So we'll continue with the design uh, ideas itself. You will also have a tutorial session over the weekend uh, where you will cover a little bit of backstepping and more examples and control the app functions. And I think there is still, I'm sure, a little bit of uh, uncertainty about how to uh, do these things. Um, coming back to what we were doing last time, we were doing backstepping. Yeah, the idea is that it's a very, very nice way of uh, designing CLFs uh, stage-wise, right? So if you start with a uh, scalar system, right? And uh, you you basically, uh, well, not a scalar system, but whatever, uh, uh, you know, I would say first order system, yeah? Uh, and then you know that you have a CLF and a stabilizing controller um, here. Then if you add an integrator, to this sort of a system of the same dimension, then you can uh, extend the existing control Lyapunov function to a control Lyapunov function of the new system. Okay, and that's what we did. We we realized that uh, if you actually uh, you know make sure that the state is exactly equal to the desired feedback, everything works nicely. But since we cannot do that, we do the next best next best thing, which is basically try to drive this variable to zero. I also emphasized, and please keep this in mind, that uh, this is different from the tracking problem, yeah, because tracking here, usually you have a function of time, right? It's some trajectory that you have designed, which is a function of time, not a function of state. So this is not the trajectory tracking problem or anything. If you, on top of this, want to solve a trajectory tracking problem, there will be some additional terms here, okay? So anyway, we have not gone to the tracking problem yet. So we basically, essentially just proved that this new function is a nice CLF, okay? It's a very nice, in fact, it's a quadratic, right? These are the sort of uh, Lyapunov functions we are very comfortable with, right? The quadratic Lyapunov functions, right? So we essentially have added a quadratic term in this error, okay? All right, great, great, okay. Now, uh, we also, uh, looked at this example, okay. Once we have done this proof, all is good. Yeah, we are now we now also looked at an example, which is actually a nonlinear system. Yeah, also doesn't look like a pure integrator, right? The important thing to remember is this doesn't look like a pure integrator, but we were still able to use backstepping. So you so so this um, adding just a pure integrator is is not sacrosanct. This is not like you know this has to be the case. You can it can be slightly different. The key thing is. Uh, you require that the control be able to cancel these terms out, right? So you want this system to somehow, you know, the control to be able to cancel these nonlinearities out, okay? That's sort of the idea. So what did we do? Now, one of the big concerns was how do you even start with a, uh, you know, Lyapunov function or a CLF for the first, you know, uh, first integrator? You take the simple case, yeah? We, we took half x squared. And we saw that if you take uh, k0 is minus kx, then you are good to go, okay? It's a stabilizing control. Then we use this k0 uh, and the new psi, which is omega in this case, to construct a new variable, which is the error between the state and the desired value of the state, right? And that's it. It gave us the control Lyapunov function, okay? And once we had that, we just took, kept taking derivatives and the control showed up. And once the control shows up here, we already know that this V is a CLF. We don't have to verify it again for every particular case. We know that this is going to be a CLF, right? So either at this stage, you can use the universal controller, which like I said, is a more complicated formula. So which is why, you know, you might want to do something different. So we do like a Lyapunov reshaping type of a thing, okay? So you essentially choose U so that this whole thing becomes negative definite, okay? And we took a few guesses, I guess, and, and we basically canceled these guys, and then uh, you introduced a good term, right? And we also saw what is the physical meaning of this. I mean, how do, you know, uh, control practitions denote these terms in the controller? So you have a, it's actually a PD controller with a feed forward term, okay? 
So, it is a PD plus feed forward controller, very standard. Even in uh, in the Syscon department, we do some experiments uh, with uh, Tudoff and this and that. I mean, there is always a you the typical controller that you are experimenting with is a feed forward or a PD plus I controller. So, and, and you know that the purpose of the integral is to in the linear case sort of do the job of the feed forward terms. Okay. So, we discussed this. Great. Now, uh, what I want to do is I want to go back a little bit and look at this. So, this is from the control Lyapunov function lectures by the way. Huh? Let us look go back and look at this example again. Let us revisit this. Yeah. If you remember the purpose was to sort of find a CLF for this system. Very simple uh, double integrator system right. A lot of um, you know um, uh, mechanical systems have this structure you can actually reduce them to this structure. Yeah. Uh, so, this is pretty relevant actually. Uh, so, if you look at this system okay, and you uh, we try to construct a sort of uh, control Lyapunov function initially if you remember. So, I am just trying to remind you what we did. The stuff in the blue was what we wrote initially and tried and wanted to check as a CLF and we took a derivative and we ended up with this much. Okay. Here the, uh, the control vector field term that is the Bx was x2 and the drift term was the x1 x2 right. So, this is the lf1 v and this is the lf0 v ok. So, we we so what do we want? We want that whenever this guy is 0 we want this guy to be negative for all non-zero states right. Now, if this guy is 0 we know that x2 is 0 which means this guy also turned out to be 0. So, this was not a good CLF right there was an issue and then it almost seemed like I arbitrarily gave a CLF. I said this is a CLF ok. Of course, we verified it. I did not tell you any motivation for how I came up with it ok. I, I just wrote this right and I said let us try this ok as a CLF. We took the derivatives again yeah. The B x that is the uh, control vector field terms came out to be this guy and the drift vector field terms came out to be this guy. Now, if this was 0 you wanted it meant that x 2 is minus x 1 right. So, so x 1 is minus x 2 whichever way you want to write it and then the first term a x became minus x 2 square right which is essentially negative right whenever the state whenever you have non-zero states ok. So, this was a valid CLF ok. Of course, I gave you another sort of trick also that whenever your uh, Lyapunov function does not turn out to be a CLF you can always try adding mixed terms yeah which also worked out this was also a valid CLF ok no problem ok. But I am not I do not want to focus on this guy I want to focus on this guy does this remind you of something now what if you look at this and you sort of look at this and you look at this yeah 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 this is how did I get this I because I know backstepping yeah because I knew backstepping beforehand yeah. So, I had some more additional information over you which is why I know that this will work yeah. So, if I if you simply go and uh, go back and take this example in fact yeah very simple and now I say that I want to construct a CLF for this system what do I do? as usual I focus on this system first right. So, what is this? I will say that my x 2 desired or what you what you have been using as k 0 x is equal to what? What is the desired x 2 I would like? Minus, huh? Minus? k x or no x k x 1 ok minus k x 1 let me say I just take minus x 1 just to make my life easy I just make I keep k to be 1 no problem technically you can choose any k right but I say I want k to be 1 ok. So, then what is my error term? So, what is my and, and what is the v 0? What would be the v 0? Just half x 1 square right this this whatever I mean we have been doing nothing too fancy ok because I know that if I take v 0 dot it is x 1 x 1 dot and if I take and x 1 x 1 dot is x 1 x 2 right. So, this this gives me v 0 dot is 
x1, x2. And if I did substitute for x2 as minus x1, I get minus x1 squared. Good to go. No problem. Okay. But of course, I cannot make x2 to be exactly minus x1. So I use the backstepping idea. I create an error. So what is my v for the entire system? What would be my v for the entire system now? Uh -huh. Absolutely. Yeah, and I know because I've already proved. I don't have to do any further work that this is a CLF. So this is a valid CLF. Okay. I already know that this is a valid control Lyapunov function. So I don't have to do any additional work. Okay. And what is this? What is this? this? Is exactly that guy, right? We just we just saw this, right? Here. Yeah. Half x1 squared plus half x1 plus x2 squared. Okay. So the motivation for writing this was exactly backstepping because I know that this will work. Okay. For this particular system. So it's actually rather powerful. You can do this kind of, um, you can play these kind of games for a lot of systems. I'm not going to go into any further examples right now. Anyway, you will see a few more in the tutorial, hopefully, which is planned for weekend. Uh, but what I will do is I'll go to the next design methods, and um, there, whatever examples we find, we try to do solve a few examples. We'll try to do the same with backstepping also. Okay. So the next uh, sort of uh, module is passivity based design. Okay. So we want to use passivity for control design. Okay. So whatever examples we find here, what I will do is we'll also try to do the same with the backstepping idea and see how things are different. Okay. So that way you have a comparison point because the ideas are sort of connected. There is an integrator idea here also. Okay. So a lot of these ideas came about because of aeromechanical systems, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, then later on, uh, although again, uh, most, uh, mostly you traditionally, especially in India, you will find control engineers in electrical engineering. Yeah. Uh, and maybe chemical engineering process control and so on. Uh, more recently in aeromechanical engineering, aeromechanical programs, you find controls folks. It's not, it was not there. Uh, that far back. Of course, you had in aerospace always guidance, navigation, and control. But you know, when I was doing my undergrad in uh, in mechanical control was like a, you know almost negligible, honestly speaking, in mechanical engineering. Yeah, at least there were no uh, you know researchers in the area. Yeah, maybe there was of course a course, the standard frequency domain course. But what I'm saying is a lot of these methods, which are by now classical, have come about from mechanical system ideas. Okay. The motivation is aeromechanical systems. Later on, uh, they have tried to see if these conditions are also satisfied by electrical, biological systems. And then these methods have been applied there also. Okay. But so it's very interesting that um, somehow we, you know, aeromechanical folks have lost contact with controls for a while. But anyway, it's, it's back. So we are fine, I think. <laughs> All right. So uh, until now, you've seen two methods of design. One is CLF. I say this as a separate method because you've already seen that once you have a CLF, you can do Lyapunov reshaping that is take derivatives, try to, you'll get a control term and you try to choose the control so that you get a V dot negative definite. Okay. So this, this is a pretty good method in itself. If you can already guess a CLF. Now, then you have a backstepping method, which is actually an idea of an uh, CLF, but you're just extending it to, you know, higher order systems. Okay. Again, I did not mention this. But you can imagine that uh, it's not difficult and, and again, the ref is KKK book. Yeah, you know which one, right? It is the Christic Kanalakopoulos Kokotovich book uh, on adaptive control. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not easy. Eh? I practiced several years. Okay. Uh, so the KKK book is a reference. You can go look at it. Yeah. This method can easily be extended for um, let's see um, systems of this kind I'm going to say f x1 plus g x2 
x2 dot is f1 sorry g1 f2 x plus g2 x3 x3 dot is f3 x1 x2 x3 plus mm, or if you want to make it you know I am sorry if you want to make it simpler I mean this will also work but yeah it is actually a but it will not it will work for several stages right. I did this two stage thing but you can see that I can I could have added a third stage and and added another term to the error yeah there will be a third term with x3 plus something yeah I can go on doing this forever yeah it will look very very complicated of course I am not saying it is going to look simple but in reality uh, again in the typical aero mechanical system context we are working with what at most sixth order system yeah so it is not that far that difficult yeah you can actually do this by hand but these these kind of systems are called I mean these are triangular form yeah or or I mean uh, I think there is also strict feedback form huh? these are called triangular form or strict feedback form systems and so on why because you can see what is happening right these drifts are depending only on the previous states right and the sort of the additional terms are depending on the next state yeah this is like this 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 is controlled by this guy this is controlled by this guy this is controlled by this guy and up and up so backwards you keep designing right yeah in reality it does not look like this is controlling because these are states but that is how we have done backstepping right we have created a desired x2 then created an error desired x3 create error desired x4 create an error and you can do this yeah so kkk book actually has a you know proper structure on how the design will look very messy looking but it will work yeah okay great so passivity based control all right so we have already seen that if you have a chain of integrators now i'm going to say if you have a chain of integrators you can do backstepping okay backstepping gives you a way of constructing a clf for a chain of integrators okay very powerful once you have a clf you can do so many things yeah great now we are going to look at uh, slightly nicer systems okay this is somehow systems having some intrinsic good property until now we have not assumed anything but the strict feedback structure and all that yeah which is not so difficult not such a very stringent assumption honestly most systems have this kind of a structure it is not that difficult yeah because if they do not then life is really really hard for you yeah so typically whatever systems you can think of and realistically you will find that this sort of a uh, you know um, strict feedback form is there in in you know maybe it is not a linear strict feedback form there may be some you know uh, typically what you will see is there will be some thing pre multiplying these right there may be some non linear pre multiplication to this and all that yeah that would be the complication but otherwise you will have some strict feedback form okay which is still doable workable but for passivity we need a little bit more assumption on the system intrinsic property itself okay so what is it we are going to now define passivity first okay uh, great so consider this input output dynamics so now we have an input output system okay so not just a states and control but also an output yeah because passivity requires there to be an output so x dot is fx u again we are not assuming uh, you know explicit dependence on time uh, things become way more complicated um, so this is just x dot is fx u and there is a y which is equal to h of x yeah notice that we are assuming that the output and input are the same dimension this is also a requirement okay otherwise it is difficult there may be more generic versions but this is the more established version yeah where the input and output are the same dimension typically the dimension less than the number of states right typically your number of actuators will be less than the number of states yeah it will be unusual if you have more uh, then they are over actuated systems okay 
of course, standard assumption is that f is locally Lipschitz uh, and h is continuous. Yeah, standard assumptions. Okay. Now, this system is called passive if there exists a C1 storage function v of x, which is positive semi definite, such that if you take v dot, which is as always defined as partial of v with respect to x, f of x, uh, then this has to be less than equal to u transpose y or the inner product of u and y. Okay. Okay. It is a weird looking definition. Yeah. It is sort of weird looking definition. So, I hope you um, sort of appreciate that. Well, uh, we will try to see what is what may be a physical you know, sort of interpretation for it. Okay, but what you are saying is that uh, you have a storage function which is like a Lyapunov-like function, right? Because we are not saying that v is positive definite. We only want it to be semi-definite, right? So it's not a Lyapunov candidate, but it's a Lyapunov-like function, and it is C1 function, of course, right? So what we are saying is that if you take the derivative of the v along the system trajectories, yeah, then it is upper bounded by the inner product of the input and output. Notice that the input is appearing in both places. Okay. So, this is as you can see a very intrinsic system property. This is not, uh, has nothing to do with how you choose control or strict feedback form or anything like that. Okay. But a lot of mechanical systems possess this property, okay, which is the cool thing when we will look at it. Let's not worry about that. Okay, great. Just passivity itself is not enough for us to uh, give stable controllers. Uh, we also need another property which is called the zero state observability. Okay, this is very much like the observability that you know from linear systems. The definition itself, uh, but just a generation to non-linear systems, not a big deal. Yeah, what is it? The system is called zero state observable if no solution of x dot is equal to f x 0 can stay in the set h x equal to 0 other than the trivial solution. Okay. As of now, I am just reading this. Okay. What, it, what did I say? I am saying that if you make the control to be 0, okay, if you do not apply any control, forget the control because typically in observability, even in linear systems, control plays no role. If the system x dot equal to a x and y equal to c x is observable, then x dot equal to a x plus b u and y equal to c x is also observable. Okay, I hope you know this. Anyway, because your controllability matrix is what? C a c a squared c. So it doesn't have b anywhere. Right? B is irrelevant here. Okay. So same in the nonlinear case also. Right? You make you remove the control. Control is playing no role. Okay. So what is the point that we are trying to make? We are trying to, and, and what does it, what do you, how do you define observability in a linear system? Anybody? Linear system observability, how, definition, not condition. Condition is this, whatever, the, the controllability, observability matrix condition. But what is the definition? Hmm? Yeah, what is the definition? What you said is the same word that I just said. <laughs> you can do. No, that is again one uh, very very special situation. If you if your all states are measured, then obviously system is observable. Typically, your observations or measurements are less than the states, number of states, right? Pretty obvious, right? I can give, take the simplest of example. You can take whatever. You can take a drone, right? States are position, velocity, angular position, angular velocity. What is your observation? You just have the three positions or three velocities for a gyroscope yeah, uh, or three velocities, three linear velocities and three angular velocities. You do not have position measurements typically hmm, or good position measurements. Okay. So, measurements less than number of obs observations. Okay. So, basically the way all these definitions are stated, yeah, observability, controllability, observability stated in a sense, it says that you can reconstruct the state from the observations. This is the thing. Can you reconstruct the state from the observations or not? That is the whole idea. Okay, so uh, so basically, how do you then you try to formalize it in you know many different ways, yeah? But the basic idea is reconstruct state from observation. And what do you mean by reconstructing states in for 
most systems governed by ODs, all you need is the initial condition. Right. Once I give you initial condition, entire state is reconstructed. Again, we are talking theoretical. Huh? If there is noise and all, obviously there is filtering and all. That's a different matter. But but we are not talking about the uh, practical case. We are talking about the theory. If it works in theory, the practical case will also work with some perturbation, some oscillations. Yeah. Uh, but the point is, you just have to reconstruct the initial condition. Okay. So given a set of observations, can you reconstruct the initial conditions? That's the question that you ask. Okay, this is also very similar. Yeah, here you say that if you look at the set h equal to zero, all the states where h x equal to zero. Okay, we are saying no solution of x dot equal to f x zero will stay in this set, except the equilibrium, except the zero state, or except the zero trajectory. Okay, 